17 and all your dreams are knocking on your front door. I'm coming to you in the most vulnerable state of my life ever. 25, you realize that nothing is the same as before. I struggle with that boundary and I do struggle with saying no. Where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? All of those years. My kids deserve their mom sober and alive. How did we end up? How did we end up? How did we end up here? I am done. I am okay being by myself. Is it all Oh, a lie. Hi, beautiful people. I'm Rachel Sievers, and you're listening to Consent to Treat. Hello, beautiful people. I'm Rachel Sievers, and you are listening to Consent to Treat's Just the Tip, a condensed version of Thursday's episode. If you like things short and sweet, this Just the Tip episode is for you. If you want to hear the full uncut session and all the commentary and tips, come back Thursday and we'll have that for you. Today, we are listening to a real life counseling session between me and Tracy, a married 33 year old white female with a bachelor's in sociology. She's a mother of two small girls with tendencies towards hypochondria, and she smokes weed daily. This year, she moved out of her in law's home and into a new home with her mother. And as we learned last season, she started working, which shifted a lot of things in her home life, in her relationships, and in her internal world. She originally came to me for therapy in 2015. We've tackled all sorts of issues, self-confidence, stress, anxiety, hypochondria, parenting, the meaning of life. This season, out of left field, she's ready for a divorce. She's had some eye-opening experiences, ending in realizations about her relationship, and she's not happy. What's she going to do about it? For the sake of her privacy, we are keeping Tracy's real name and identifying information hidden. She's given us permission to record and publish this session. Please be aware, sessions with me always include mature language. And with that, hate it, love it, learn something. Enjoy. Well, can we first start with how you look? Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, because... You're a lot smaller than the last time I saw you. Yes. What has happened to you? It's been like a combination of things that I've just gotten lucky. But I think the biggest thing is, is that I have really cut sugar out and uh, just like not eating very much in general. Okay. Yeah. So how are you feeling physically now? Does it feel healthy to you? Yes. So I just feel healthier, like endurance wise, like dealing with my kids, like playing with them or... um throws very bad tantrums still so like dealing with her pretty much almost every day she like doesn't want to leave school and so she's fighting and she's kicking and it just like with that like just battling my child from you know leaving school or like she just has intense tantrums where she does get a little violent from time to time so dealing with her like and even my uh, dealing with her physically yeah or or your mood or your irritability patience Yeah. All of that's changing for you. Yeah. So, and this whole month we were all sick. I get sick being in the school now. So it's definitely like a a cycle of like trying to maintain this like new chapter, but this old chapter at the same time of like navigating working mom instead of stay at home mom. But yeah, definitely just like navigating this new sick world and just like the the state of my marriage. Because last time we had talked, mm-hmm. I basically had told you that I wanted him to leave at this point. Like mm-hmm. I was ready to just separate. So within I think like that week, I had told him and he I just mm-hmm. felt like didn't take me serious. Oh, and yeah. yeah, I was going to say, how, how did yeah. how did he take that? Uh, he just kind of brushed it off or what? what so do you mean? initially we were fighting about something and he made the comment, I'm just tired. And I said, yeah, me too. And like, we shouldn't be this tired. And our problems that we're tired of have been the problems that before we were even married. Right. Like, and now that you're a dad, I need you to be around more. I need you to be like in the moment. Like, I don't want you sitting in the room with them on your phone or reading a book or doing any fucking thing else. But I want your eyes on them. And I want you to be actually cognitive of what they're doing. That is what like being present in the moment is. And I like broke it down with them. And I told him we need to go to counseling. 
like if we're gonna survive we have to go to counseling and it was one ear and out the other and I was like okay like you know what I said my piece and so I would like you you're not taking it seriously I I like we you should leave at this point and he was like no he was like if I leave that's when we divorce and I was like okay well then you should leave and like he kind of like just stopped and he was like you're ready to divorce at this point and I was like yeah I was like, I'm ready to sign papers. These are the problems that have continuously been going on. And I wouldn't say we have like these, well, recently we have, but like this turbulent marriage, right? It's not a bad, violent, it's just an irritating marriage. I just want to be clear when you're talking about the problems that have persisted over time, you're talking about him really not being involved, not tuned in, kind of doing his own thing just really not knowing what's going on with you, not knowing what's going on with the girls. Yes. Just not being connected. Yes. In. Yeah. And yeah. I, know, I know that you're such an independent woman that it took you a while to even kind of realize what was yeah. happening, right? Yeah. You know, you've just kind of carried everything and done everything. And it's just been coming to a head over the last couple of years. Yeah. I'd say over the last year, once we moved out of his parents' house and we got our own and like, I'm trying to do this. I, I want them to read for half an hour a day, but I'm the only one doing it. But then when he does it, I find him the books on the floor and he's on his phone. So then I would just pick up the book and start doing it because it needed to be done. But now I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Like that, I yell at him and I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Like I leave the room and it's like, oh, Mom's gone for everybody. So you're just going to do whatever the bare minimum. And that's what I told him. I was like, if you're going to do the bare minimum, I don't need you to be around all the time. Like they don't need you. They don't need a babysitter. Like they need a father to like interact with them. And then so when I was telling him I wanted him to leave, he said, well, then I'm going to take them with me. And I just started busting up laughing I was like, what are you going to feed them? What do they eat? And he kind of like looked at me and I was like, okay, um, how many milliliters uh, is allergy medicine? You know, just simple things, you know, that he has no idea that I do because I've just done it. And maybe it's partly my deal that I've never said that I've done these things. But then once I do say I do these things, there's still no recognition. And then I think that's where the problem starts to to you know and then I think like I have so much animosity towards you for like the things that happened when I was in labor and like you're so short-tempered and then what happened when you were in labor remember or like he just didn't think that I was in labor with my second one oh that's right yes so he made me wait and then I was like contracting every minute and I was like on the way to the hospital and he was just like I bet you you're not even in labor because he was technically on call and I was just like you are a fucking medical professional telling me who uh, who," because he just like didn't believe me that I was like in labor or I don't know how to explain it and this is it is so bizarre to me it is just like underlying I'm wrong and that's what I told him like the duration of our marriage has been like I'm just always wrong like no matter what it is I'm just wrong about it no matter what I ask for yeah it's like not the right thing or it's not taken seriously I'm not my words aren't taken seriously I'm not yes yeah I'm not heard I think at that point will started turning had you never talked to him about what an impact your birth story had on you Is that the first time you guys talked about that? I honestly don't even know if I realized it until like two years ago. Oh. But, you know, over the summer, I just felt like really unhappy. And so when I was telling him, you know, I'm unhappy. And then finally, I know he heard me because I went crazy one day. We were at Costco and he made a comment about like me spending money. And I just fucking I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I it was this was like three days after I asked him to leave. Right. And he didn't want to leave. And then I said, if you want, I can leave and go to my sister's and you can the girls can stay here. And then like we can switch and do it that way. And he said he wouldn't want to do it that way. So I said, "Okay, fair enough. And then he was like, if you're being serious then yeah, we'll go to counseling. But I was like, "Okay, well, you do it then you find the counselor because you are all, you know, and he's like, we can't go to Rachel because like ethical. Right. So because you know me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be a fair counselor to him. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So we found another guy, but our insurance doesn't take it. And he's pretty pricey. So I'm telling him like, okay, it's like a divorce, which is going to be even more money or like this is the realistic situation that we're in. So that was about a month and a half ago. 
And at that point, when we got into the fight at Costco, we were fighting about money. We were just fighting about everything. And then I told him that I was so unhappy with him and that I was ready to walk. And I know that he's looking at me like because I felt like this was the first time he heard me. He was like looking at me like, oh, fuck, like you're going psych. Like I was being a psycho in the car. Like I was like, I am not doing any of the fucking shopping anymore. You're you're, you're so worried about money and like getting gifts and stuff. But and, and that is totally fine. But I just can't do that. So you're going to start doing all the shit that I do because I'm done doing it. Mm -hmm. And then he said that he didn't know I felt like that. And I was like, that's such bullshit. I have told you a million times. And you know what is so sad that I know for a fact in your stupid fucking brain, you're looking at me and saying, oh, this is the first time I like really have heard this from you. And I'm going to sit here and fucking tell you this is probably like the 17th time I've told you, but this is the first time you're fucking paying attention, isn't it? And he was like, I called him out on it. I know the way he thinks. I know his behavior. And I'm like, I am done. I am okay being by myself. And I know what I bring to the table. The cliche, I'm not afraid to walk away. Mm -hmm. And so now that just like woke him up. I don't know in a way he's done a lot of things that I've asked. He's way more aware of things. He helps me without me having to ask him for the help, which has been pretty significant, I'd say. Like if I'm flustered and I'm trying to get the girls ready for school and like myself ready for work. I don't need you to sit there and be like, what do you need me to do? Or just fucking do their hair, get their shoes on. I don't know. Do something. You know what I mean? Something that needs to be done. Yeah. And so like he's done that, but now he's doing everything. I'm pretty much asking, but now I'm kind of like, I'm still royally annoyed with you. So Mm. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's just done dead in the water, which is again, why I'm like, we need to do this counseling thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So have you guys started counseling? No, we have not. Okay. That experience is is really normal. Like after so many years of asking for what you want, when you finally get it, you'd think, and usually your partner's like, well, I'm giving it to you. Why are you so upset at me? <laughs> and you'd think that you would be happy or relieved. Great. I'm finally getting what I want. But it's really common for the opposite to happen, to instead be really pissed. Oh my God. That's that, where I... Oh, no. You see, you are capable. Yes. You could have been doing it the entire fucking time. time. See? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you for speaking up. Yes. You started seeing a problem and you didn't wait too long to say, nope. Yes. This is a problem I will not tolerate it anymore. Yes. Okay. So maybe you didn't see it for a long time, but as soon as you started seeing it, you started acting on it. Yes. You know, and I'm super proud of you for that because you could have just stayed quiet for the next 10 years. Yeah. And I and just, neither one of you deserve that. No, exactly. The fact that I still kind of want to stay, I guess, tells me something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but yeah, I'm literally just like navigating these waters. I know I'm not going to have a decision by next week. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just feeling one day at a time. Yep. And every day, allow your answer to be different. The yeah. answer to how am I feeling about it today? Yeah. You and know? it, it and varies. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's great today. I love it. And tomorrow it might be I I want out. I'm I'm ready to run down the street yeah. right now. And just allow those answers to build up over time. Okay. One yeah. day at a time. Okay. Yes. I'm definitely in this channel like. <sighs> yep. Purgatory. Yes, I'm purgatory (laughs) right now. So uncomfortable. I know. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Okay, so that is the first time we've heard from Tracy this season. Dun, dun, dun. We didn't really see this coming because most of what we heard from Tracy is, I've got my husband, got my kids, got my job doing life and dissatisfaction in her marriage has never really been the thing. It's never really been the topic. It's always been like, yeah, we're, you know, we're good. We're good. And only recently has she been bringing to the forefront. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty unhappy. I'm, I'm finding myself annoyed. I'm like angry all the time at him. I think it's really interesting that she could go for so many years, not realizing what was not being given to her that she actually needed. I love how frank she is about things. You know, she's just really not afraid to say, yeah, I'm just pissed. I'm pissed at him every day. (laughs) 
<laughs> she's lost all that guilt stuff, which I love because it allows her to really be able to just throw it out there on the table and do something with it. Okay, I'm annoyed with him every single day. What am I going to do with this? She's not hiding it. She's not sugarcoating it. I mean, how many times have I talked about guilt and how it's not only useless most of the time, but it actually gets in the way of processing through things, healing through things, you know, making good decisions about things. It clouds the situation. I feel so guilty saying that I'm annoyed and angry with my husband every day. Well, it doesn't change the fact that you're annoyed and angry with him. And what are you going to do with that? We're going to talk to him about it. We're going to go to counseling. We're going to divorce him. Like what move are you going to make? You can't as, as long as you're so guilty that you can't even talk about it. You're not moving forward. You can't work on it. So you can tell guilt, get the fuck out. Put it outside the door, shut the door and get down to what's real. I'm annoyed and I'm angry. What am I going to do with this? I have to say that I'm inspired by her because I've been in that position before. Boy, can I relate? Oof. I was very much raised to you cook the dinner, you serve the dinner. The man gets up from the table, you clean his plate, you keep the house nice. This is the woman's job. I grew up in a house where my mom was both the breadwinner and was in charge of everything going on in the house. I grew up with that idea. And so I naturally inserted myself into that role. And I would just be so angry all the time, constantly just fuming. And it wasn't really even my spouse's fault. I have a lot of resentment to society, to you know, the church, to my parents, you know, all that stuff. And I've worked through a lot of that, but man, this is a common issue with women, especially. I've had a few male clients who have felt very much like this. Like, man, I have to cook. I have to clean. I have to do the grocery shopping and I'm the one working and I'm the one taking care of everything. People end up in these roles and then there's no space in there to live. There's nothing left. If you're spending your day doing a bunch of shit that you don't even feel like doing. Anywho, I can definitely relate. I know a lot of people out there can relate. So here's your actual tip for the day. Many times uh, a client will ask me, should I tell my partner this? Should I tell my partner what I'm thinking? Should I tell my partner that I'm about to leave them? Should I tell them that if they don't give me what I want, I'm out the door? And my answer is always, yes, yes. That's your partner. They deserve to know what's going on in your head. They deserve the chance to make it right with you. Now, the problem here is that it's often misunderstood and taken as an ultimatum. So you're telling me if I don't do X, Y, and Z, you're just going to leave me. Thanks for the ultimatum. Okay. Understand that, yes, it may be mistaken when you tell your partner, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, I will be leaving next month. It's okay if it's mistaken. <laughs> It's okay if they think you're giving them an ultimatum. The reality is it's not coming from a place of an ultimatum. It's coming from a place of you need to know what's happening in me. You need to know where my limits are at because I want to give you the opportunity to make changes if you want. Okay. You're not demanding this person makes changes. You're not threatening them with like the threat to leave. That's not what's happening. It's this is what's going on in me. This is what I need. And if I don't get it, this is what I'm going to have to do for myself. This is not an ultimatum. How the other person takes it is not your responsibility. And being afraid of how the other person is going to take it shouldn't keep you from doing it. All right. I think that's it for today. To all you beautiful people out there who are in the same place as Tracy, my heart goes out to you. It's a tough place to be in. And this is also the place where many marriages shift and become fantastic. Unfortunately, relationships have to kind of fall apart sometimes so that you can rebuild them into something way better. Now, is it a guarantee that it's going to be rebuilt? No, but this is what's needed for relationships to grow. It's tough. It's scary. You have to be brave to put yourself out there and do what she's doing right now. Super proud of her. So today has been a lot about roles and a lot about boundaries. And if you're interested in learning more about boundaries, I have a ton on my social media. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's Rachel Mary Jane Sievers. Instagram and TikTok, Rachel Sievers, MS. 
Thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. This has been Consent to Treat. From Rachel Seavers and Elodie. <laughs> Thank you for listening and supporting beautiful people. Goodbye. Goodbye.